Morgan determined in his own mind that simply crossing the river briefly and striking back wouldn't do much of anything. So he determined instead to take 2,500 Confederate cavalry, cross over into Indiana, and then sweep through southern Indiana across southern Ohio, attempting to draw off as many troops as possible before knifing back into the South. And that's precisely what he did in, the, in May of 1863. And he was extraordinarily successful. By the time he had reached central Ohio, he was being pursued by no less than 25,000 Union troops, most of them mounted. He decided to strike back south to get across the river at a place called Buffington's Island. Union troops repulsed him and forced what was remaining of his troops back across the Ohio River. With 700 men, he moved north, trying to find a place to cross the Ohio. He never found it. He was isolated in eastern Ohio, surrounded, and he and what remained of his troops surrendered to the dominant Union force. Most of Morgan's cavalry was sent to the Camp Chase Confederate prison located on the west side of Columbus. By the time the war ended, a prison camp designed to hold at maximum 2,500 troops was holding 10,000 Confederate troops. About 5,000 of them died there. About 2,300 of them are still buried there, one of the largest Confederate cemeteries in America. And many of those are Morgan's Raiders. Morgan himself and his senior officers, however, were sent to the escape-proof Ohio Penitentiary with the assumption that they would be kept there for the balance of the war. The idea was that there was simply no way that a person could easily escape from something that was three stone walls and an iron door. And for a lot of people, it was true. For Morgan and his officers, however, it only took seven weeks to escape from the escape-proof Ohio Penitentiary. <laughs>